DJI Pocket Osmo. Now a lot of people are complaining about this camera online and I really don't know what they were expecting. It's not a primary camera. You want a primary camera you for video shooting you have a DSLR or a professional grade or prosumer grade video camera. They're comparing a $395 camera to a $6,000 camera. If you get a decent DSLR like a Canon 5D Mark IV with a prime lens, you're at a little over 6000 bucks. So you can't really compare $400 to $6,000. Plus the weight of it. This isn't meant to be a primary camera. I think this is meant to be a secondary camera with pickup shots, um, some B-roll. You know, you can keep it in your pocket. The thing's about the size of two or three little, um, like, a, like a big lighter super light compact and I want to mention that this was purchased it was not given to us by DJI or anything else it was purchased and it's, it's just great for those pickup shots the low light they were comparing it to the hero 7 once again when I look at the pictures I've got a GoPro but it's not the hero 7 not the brand new one this one is a little crisper than the it's, it's bad to digitally enhance any photo. It starts to degenerate it. So I'm going to show you a couple <clears throat> shots here that I'm going to get. And by the way, you see this here? Uh, shoulder surgery uh, six weeks ago. Two ripped tendons and a displaced bicep head. So I'm filming with my left hand. I'm a right-handed person. So this is going to show some of the, the gimbal activity on this camera. So I really, I, I enjoy this camera. It's not my primary camera. Not by any stretch of the means, but it is a great pickup shot camera. So it fits in your pocket too, so you can pull it out at any time. and fast track is on before we just had the gimbals on. We're gonna see how it operates. The camera person is holding the camera in a still position and it's, the camera's going to do all the work itself. From my perspective, it seems to be doing pretty well. We'll see how smooth it is, how accurate it is. And you do want a little bit of that flow inside your, inside your um, video anyway, because that flow gives it a more natural feel. Your eyes never completely track on someone 100% like when you mount a GoPro or another type of action camera on a harness and it's here and you see everything moving in the background and they're steady. That always looks a little strange to me unless you're doing some kind of a sequence in the woods or something like that for some type of an effect. So we'll see how this looks. I think it's looking pretty good. That's a big plus for this camera. I continue to move to see how it tracks. I'm on a stage set right now for a cooking show so it's very well lit here's a quick insert if you use final cut pro 7 or back i went to final cut pro 10 didn't like it so i reverted back to final cut pro 7 if you're using that make sure you film in mp4 not .mov. it will not accept it motion will not accept it so i shoot in 4k take it into motion take it down to 1920 by 1080 or 2k and then that's where I export it, and then I pull it into Final Cut Pro to work with. I do have Premiere Pro, not a huge fan of it. It's a little clunky to me after working with Final Cut Pro. They're all automobiles. They all get you from point A to point B. It's just in the manner which you get there. Okay, it's been several days since I've went to the beach with the new DJI Pocket Osmo and put it through some paces. I'm purposely walking in and out of sunlight into shaded areas. I've got the camera set on automatic settings with the exception of 4K um, 30p. So I want to see how it works. Pros and cons. Okay, the pros. Love the gimbal. Anybody who tells you that a digitized 
electronic stabilization is better than a mechanical is off their rocker. Uh, they have probably not had anything on a massive big screen like a 55 foot screen. Artifacts all over the place. Um, I like the gimbal. It's mechanical. It's good. It doesn't digitize anything in the background. There's no artifacts showing. I like it. I like it. it. To me, it's much superior. Anything that you enhance, if you work with video, anytime you add or subtract anything from that video, you're delineating the quality of it. Starting out mechanically, it's much better. Just like a mechanical shutter versus electronic. Love that. Uh, the quality seems to be pretty good. The the 4K, 30. Uh, maybe I should have shot some of those shots at 60. I didn't. I didn't have it hooked up to the phone. And that's coming on a con for this uh, instrument. But I liked it. Now, the cons. Oh, one another pro for this. The size. It's the size of like two and a half, three big lighters. It fits right in my pocket. I find myself taking this camera with me, which I've never done on with any of our other cameras. Of course, they're, they're much bigger. Something happens. Something happens on the street or something. Boom. Five seconds. It's ready to go. So it's a great camera for that aspect. The um, cons. Several. One is you have to hook this up to your phone or an iPad or an Android device to access the pro features such as getting it from 1920 to 1080 to 1920 1080 to 4k uh, setting the manual ISO and all that it has to be set up through a phone not just any phone my Android phone has a USB mini this requires the USB C so it's a newer Android phone and I think like they I just read a statistic where about 90% of the people have USB mini for their android devices so it knocks out a lot i think dji could have done a better job and had an interface for that or you can use an apple device of i think it's the i6 phone and up or an i a newer generation ipad but the ipad is too big for this device you don't want to hold it uh audio port audio is not that great especially in any type of noise environment or with wind the audio port is facing me right now so if I flip the camera around and I'm filming a subject, the audio is still facing backwards. So you get this muffled sound that sounds like you're in a tin can. It's okay if you're in an extremely quiet environment. It doesn't match anything professional like our Sennheiser mics or anything. It doesn't match those. Um, I don't think too many handheld devices or off-camera recording devices are going to, but it's pretty poor when you flip the camera around or you're in any type of noisy environment. I would put an audio port on the other side for this device and also an eighth inch jack. That's what I would recommend. Accessing the features on this camera, you can access extremely limited features without the phone hookup or an iPad or an iPhone. I don't care for that. I would rather have it on me to be able to go from 1920 to 1080 to 40 to 4K, 30p to 60p to 24p. I'd rather have that right in here. I think that's something that should be fairly easy and maybe coming with a firmware update. So it is a $395 camera. They've been comparing it to the GoPro 7, completely different camera. This gimbal is not going to take a beating like the GoPro in a case which you have for uh, underwater. It can take a fall of 10, 20, 30 feet on uh, on on, sa on a sandy soil or on grass and a few feet on concrete. This will not take that. This gimbal, I'm sure, would break. Not meant for that. That's an action camera. Um, different camera, those two cameras, like this one and my GoPro, they're meant for different things and they will be used for different applications. By no means does this replace, neither does the GoPro, your primary camera. So I'm probably starting to shake a little bit. I told you my shoulder is a little bit tight right now both of them and um, so I guess it's a good test for the for the gimbal so hope you enjoyed this please make sure to like subscribe and share and hit that little bell icon so you make sure you're alerted when we do put a new video up and I hope this is informative to you please let me know what you think if you have them thank you